Okay, so I'm doing this tutorial and slash video rant because of a recent announcement by Apple and that has to do with two of their of their iPod models, the Nano and the Shuffle. They are both being discontinued by Apple and both products are probably pretty good, especially for younger kids that you don't want to have being carrying around a smartphone and they still want to listen to their music. But I could also understand why Apple would do that because the market for music players that are standalone is not as big as it was, say, seven, eight years ago. And also, there are some cheaper models on the market. Probably not as good of a quality as Apple, but there are some alternatives. Um, now, the reason why I'm going to discuss this is because with Apple transitioning more towards iPads, iPhones, I know the iPod Touch is still on the market, but some in the Apple News community say that that may be on the way out. Um, so keep an eye on that. I know with the recent announcement, they also increased the file, not the file size, storage size, I should say, of the iPod Touch. And, you know, for information on that, go to Apple's website. But for those of us who either don't have an iPhone or an iPad because it's too expensive, we have the MacBook and we just don't really have the money to be throwing out there regarding the, regarding it, I have some little solutions here. I do not have an iPhone and the reason why I don't is because with my provider T-Mobile it is outrageously expensive and the reason why is because for those of us that have T-Mobile you'll know this T-Mobile doesn't have contract plans so I have an Android this is going to this is going to save you if you are a Mac user and you have an Android or if you're somebody that has iTunes and you have an Android or maybe maybe your smartphone's an Android, your tablet's an Android, and that is a little something called Google Play. Now Google Play, you know that's where you get your apps, you can get music. You can get music, you can get movies, you can get all sorts of things. It's kind of like, kind of like Google's version of iTunes. And a little known feature, and you saw that little orange arrow right there that was pointing up. That is because Google Play right now was uploading some songs from my iTunes. Yes, you can do that. Now, I have Google Chrome up, and, you know, guys, you should really be using something like Chrome. Safari, as good as Apple is, Safari hasn't really been that good in the last couple of years. At least I don't think it has. Um, in Google Play Music, there's a little feature that says Upload Music. You can click that, and... What you'll do is, you know, you click it, and it'll give you this, and you can go onto, if you're using Chrome, you can go pull up your iTunes folder and do a drag and drop. If not, you'll have to do the select from computer thing, and we all know that deal. So I'm going to close out that. Another thing is, and I have my iTunes folder linked to this particular Google Play account so 
I'm just going to, so where, where I show where it is, there's going to be something different. I will explain it when we get in. In your settings, which I'm getting into, now, before I go into that, I want to point this out. This is my other Google account. Now, right here it has, like, your Google, name of your Google account, which is usually your Gmail address, your account type. Mine's the free one. There is a paid version where you can get unlimited radio and stuff, as you can see down below. I think that's maybe $10 a month. I forgot. But you can you can store up to 50,000 songs on it. Right now, I have about 2,160. 50,000 songs is very, is great. And this, I believe it'll be both what you upload and if you purchase music on Google Play. Um, so, so that's something to keep in mind. Also, 50,000 songs is actually 10,000 songs more than what the iPod Classic, which was discontinued in 2015, could hold. I actually have the classic. It runs, it still runs great. And, you know, I'll use it from time to time, but sometimes I will want to listen to music and I don't have my iPod with me. So this comes in very handy. And trust me, I will tell you right now, I have maybe, maybe 3,000, 4,000 songs on my iPod classic. So they're probably, unless you are a total music freak there is probably no way you will get 50,000 songs now this it just has like improved recommendations which is more when you're in the Google Play store block explicit songs that's more like if you're in the Google Play store than Google Play music history which I have never went into I've never went into location history. Here, here's where I was going to show you. It says music from this computer. Now it says music from the following folders will be added to Google Play Music. And I have my iTunes folder linked to it. Had I not have this, I would have something similar to this orange button here. And I would just click it and it would give me a thing on how to link the iTunes folder to Google Play. And this is a really great tool to have if you if you're like me you have a Mac but you have an Android smartphone there's some pros and cons to this and it may be a pro and con to the to things like the Apple iPhone or the iPad um, if anybody knows if I'm right or wrong please let me know in the comments the issue is basically with data and the data issue is there's the data allowage which you know some providers in the United States have like a limit on data plans and you could buy different data plans separately. I know um, T-Mobile, which I have, they've been kind of doing away with it with T-Mobile One. They they also have it where technically you have unlimited data. And I know when I had this, when I had a plan like this a couple of years ago, it was technically I had unlimited data but after a certain amount which i think was like maybe 10 gigs my connection speed would slow i'm now actually in a grandfathered plan on t-mobile where it's unlimited everything and my data speed never slows and that's only because i locked in at a really great deal when they did a promo about two years ago um so that's a con if you have that kind of wireless plan because Google Play Music stores everything in their cloud storage. 
So, so in a way, you can, and you can download music from Google Play onto, say, your Mac. I did a tutorial on that not too long ago. I will provide a link in the description. So that's, that's a pro and a con. The other con that I've come across is in the way of cell service, and that is if you're in an area with spotty cell service. Like, I live near a major metropolitan city, and when I go into the city, I will lose it. Like, if I go somewhere where there's a lot of buildings with interference, I go in a building with equipment that interferes, or if I go into... Or if I go into like the subway or there's actually an underground train station in the city. And of course, those of you that know Philadelphia know what I'm talking about. But you almost always lose data connection. You almost always lose cell phone connection. I think the only people that don't have a problem is AT&T. And that's because AT&T owns the naming rights to... To a station on the Broad Street subway. <laughs> Philly people, you know what I mean. <laughs> and, you know, so data will be the big, will be a big issue with this. However, there are ways around it. Like, let's say you're somewhere where you want to listen to your music and they have Wi Fi and you're going to be there for a while. Turn on your Wi Fi. A lot of places do have the free Wi-Fi. I mean, hospitals, libraries, McDonald's, big Starbucks. I don't know. I don't really go to Starbucks that much. But if there's free Wi-Fi, take advantage of it. Um, and you know that will be that would be a biggest con. But the upside to it is you necessarily don't have to panic when you have your when you're out and you don't have like a music player because you do it's on your phone like I said I do not know if this would be an issue with the iPhone um, iPhone users please please let me know and we'll you know we'll see what happens with iPod touch like I said some critics I I have to find the I have to find the video, but there was one guy who runs another Mac channel who basically said that he has a feeling that the iPhone will be discontinued just because the market is a little different. So who knows? And who knows either? Who knows as well because ever since Tim Cook became CEO of Apple on you know, in the wake of Steve Jobs passing, you know, he did a lot of drastic changes to Apple. Although I shouldn't say they were too drastic because there are some things that you could tell Steve's legacy is kind of there. And he may have improved on some things, but there are some things he did that even I don't agree with. So that's pretty much about it with this tutorial slash rant I will have a link in the description like I said for my other Google Play tutorial which shows how to download music that you may have purchased on